Hello and welcome to how do I create a report using a query in Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013 R2. My name is Steven Renders. I am a Microsoft Certified Trainer for Microsoft Dynamics NAV and SQL Server. And I have created this video for you in collaboration with Microsoft and Platan, a Microsoft Dynamics Solutions Training Center in Belgium. At the end of this video, you will understand how to create a report based upon a query object. So uh, the objective of this video is to show how to use a query object as a data source in a report. I will do this in uh, three steps. In step one, we will create a query object uh, for the customer sales data. In uh, step two, we will then use the query to build the data set for the report. And in step three, we will then build the report layout based upon the fields from the query object. So let's get started with the first step and create a query object for the customer sales data. So uh, here we can see uh, the query object uh, that I prepared for this uh, uh, report. And uh, it's a very simple query. I'm going to use the customer table as the first data item. And uh, from the customer table using uh, the field menu, I have uh, added, for example, the salesperson code, the country, region code, the city, number and name uh, of the customer. Now, I only want to show the number and the name of the customer. So what I did is actually I changed the salesperson, the country and the city into a filter field. So filter fields will not be uh, uh, available in the uh, results of the query. Uh, they are actually used to be able to filter the query when uh, using it. Then below I have a second uh, data item which will fetch information from uh, the customer ledger table. Here I am fetching the sales and the profit uh, local currency. And uh, for these two fields I actually defined a totaling method of the sum. And I am a grouping by number and name uh, of the customer. In the properties of this uh, data item I'm using a data item link type exclude rows if no match. So if there is a customer without any uh, ledger entries it will not be available in the result uh, set data item link is set to link the two tables using the number of the uh, customer. Uh, that's basically it. Here in the, the properties of the query, what I've also done is I have entered a top number of rows uh, to filter and only get back uh, the 10 results. So we're going to make this a top 10 query. And I'm actually ordering by the total sales uh, fields. So I will actually retrieve the top 10 customers according to the sales local currency or basically the sum of the sales local currency in my query. So this is my query and uh, let's run the query to actually see the results. So uh, here are the results of the query. I can see 10 customers with their number and name and I can see the total sales and total profits. Now that we have seen how to create the query, let's have a look at how we can use this query to build the data set for a report. So here we are in uh, the object uh, designer and uh, if I'm going to create a new report, the first thing that we have to do is uh, select uh, a data item. Uh, the data item can then become the data source of the report. But uh, if we click on the data source, the only thing that we can use is actually uh, a table. And here in the list of tables, we're not seeing any query objects. So to be able to use a query as a data source in a report, we're going to have to use uh, a workaround. And uh, I've prepared a report with uh, the workaround already uh, included. So let's have a look at this uh, report. Now, what I've actually done is I have created uh, a couple of uh, variables. And one uh, is actually a variable which is pointing uh, to my query object. And I'm going to use this variable to fetch and request the results from uh, the query. Then in my report, I'm basically using an integer uh, table. This uh, integer table, I've named it uh, query results. I am using a data item table view so that it will not show up uh, in uh, the request page of uh, the report. And what I've done is I've also created uh, some uh, variables. And let's have a look at these variables here, customer number, name, uh, total sales and total profits, which are actually going to store the results uh, from the fields in uh, the query. And then I'm going to write a little bit of code to be able to access uh, the fields from uh, the query object. Let's have a look at uh, the code here. Basically in the onPreData item trigger uh, of my query, the first thing that I'm doing is I'm filtering the integer table from one to top X. 
Uh, now top x is actually also a variable that I've included uh, in my query object. And I've also created a request page uh, so that the user is able to enter a number as a top x. And this top x will actually be used to filter the query dynamically. So it will not be filtered hard coded on uh, 10. Then I'm going to clear some variables. I'm going to use my top x fields uh, in the top number of rows filter of my query. And next I am going to use the open function. Uh, the open function on a query object will actually execute uh, the query. Then I am going to actually loop uh, over my 10 results or, or can also be something else and in the on after get uh, record uh, uh, trigger uh, of my integer data item i'm going to use the read function uh, to read one row of the query results uh, these results are coming in here uh, in these fields from my query variable and i'm going to assign them uh, to the variables that i've added in uh, the data set if there are no uh, more records then i'm going to clear my variables now, it might be the case that the user is, for example, selecting the top 20 uh, for my query, but there are only, uh, let's say, 16 results. In that case, I don't, do not want uh, the last uh, four rows uh, to be uh, zero in my query object. Uh, that's why, actually, I am keeping track uh, of the number of results in my top x actual uh, variable. And at the end of the execution of the query, I am closing uh, the query. Close is a function uh, that you have to use uh, to close uh, the query uh, object. Now in our report, we also would like to have the captions of the query fields available. And to make it a, a better performing report, I'm not going to include them in this data set. And what I'm actually doing is I have added an extra integer data item, which I have actually filtered on one. And this filtering will take place here. And uh, in this data set, I am using the column caption field uh, on my query variable for all of the fields from the query. And this way I'm adding them actually in an extra row in the data set. Here at the end, I will also be adding uh, my top x and the actual uh, top x. Uh, let's have a look at the execution and the results uh, for this uh, query object. So I'm just going to run my uh, report. Then I'm going to say, for example, that I'm going to filter on uh, 20 rows. I'm going to activate the result set uh, feature. I'm going to preview my report. At this moment, there is no layout, but I'm able to access uh, the data set. And here in the data set, what we can see is that there are actually, in this case, a number of results uh, coming in. Now I can see that I have uh, the captions available, that I requested the top 20 of the customers, but there are only 16 rows, uh, the rows that contains uh, or contain uh, results. So this is now my data set. In the beginning of the data set, I have all the fields from the query with the values available. Then I have a number of empty rows. And at the end, in the last row, I have the captions. And I can see my uh, top x, my filters that I used in uh, the query uh, object. Now that we have seen how to use a query uh, to build the data set in the report, let's now use the query fields in the report layout. So let's go to the layout of the uh, report. I am uh, going to use uh, Visual Studio to create uh, the report uh, layout. Uh, next, once it's open, I am going to uh, visualize uh, the data sets. So I'm going to do this by going into the view menu, I'm going to activate the report data. Here I can see my uh, results, I can see my caption fields, I can see uh, my uh, query fields. I'm just going to insert a table. And uh, what I'm then going to do in my table is I'm going to use uh, and enter the caption uh, fields. So I'm going to use the number uh, caption. Then I'm going to use the name uh, caption in here. And next I will show the total sales. I'm going to insert a column to the right and I'm going to show the total uh, profit uh, caption. And here I'm going to actually show the actual number. I'm going to use the actual name. I'm going to show the total sales and the total uh, profit. Then I'm going to go to the properties of these two uh, text boxes. 
I'm going to change the format into a, a custom format. I'm going to basically use my format for the sales in this uh, text box and I'm going to do it similarly for the profit uh, text box. I'm going to create here another custom expression using the format function uh, which I'm also uh, retrieving from my uh, data sets. This I'm going to make uh, bold. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to the properties of my table and I'm going to actually include a uh, filter. Now I'm going to filter my data sets and I'm going to make sure that, for example, the number of the customer, uh, which I'm going to convert into a string field, uh, must not be, uh, is going to be a greater than the uh, empty uh, expression. Uh, so I'm uh, filtering on only the result uh, rows. So let's have a look at what we have at uh, this moment. So if I'm uh, going to save and run uh, this report, I can see in this case uh, my top 10. As you can see, I made a little mistake because I'm not showing the captions. So let's uh, correct this. So I am uh, going to empty these fields and I am actually uh, going to use an expression. And in my expression, I am uh, going to fetch uh, the caption. Now the caption in this case is going to be a part of the last record. So I am uh, going to basically fetch uh, the last record. And I'm going to apply the same principle to all of these uh, rows. So uh, let's uh, do this for the second uh, column. I'm going to create an expression. I'm going to go to the data set. I'm fetching uh, the name but it uh, should come from the last uh, row. I'm going to do it uh, similarly for my total of the sales caption fields. I'm going to use the last one and then I'm going to do it also in here for, uh, for my total profits. So it's important that we use the last row in our data set because it's in that row uh, that we basically have uh, put the uh, captions so here in the last row of the uh, data sets. So let's have a look now at uh, the result of my reports. And as we can see, uh, we can now see the captions. So let's go back to the report and enhance it a little bit more. And what I have done at uh, this moment is in the text box uh, properties of the captions, I have enabled an interactive sorting. Uh, so if we click on the number, we'll sort on number. If we click on name, then we sort on name and uh, so on. Then I could also, for example, include a chart in this uh, report. Uh, let's, for example, create a nice uh, pie chart. In this uh, chart, uh, we are going to show uh, the total sales uh, and we are going to show the total profit and we're going to do it basically uh, by a uh, customer. Uh, and if I am going to create this type of uh, charts, let's have a look at uh, the results. So if I run the report, uh, I am now able to sort on number name or any of the columns uh, in here. And if you scroll down a little bit, we can see a chart appearing in which we are also going to see uh, the top 10 of the customers. Of course, I also have to include uh, the filter in this chart not to show these uh, uh, the little empty uh, rows. But you know how to do that. It's actually the same filter. Then we apply it in the table. Now, by creating this uh, report, what we have done actually is we have almost rebuilt uh, the customer top 10 uh, report or report 111. But in this case, we have used a query object to fetch the results, which is basically much more performant than the standard object 111. Let's go over uh, the steps uh, once more. So in the, the first step, I created a query object in which I fetched information from the customer and the customer ledger entry table. Then in the step two, we added uh, the query object via an integer data item and a little bit of uh, programming to the report uh, data set uh, designer. And we also added a dynamic uh, top X uh, filter. 
Next, in uh, step three, uh, we created the layout of the report. We used uh, a table and the charts and basically rebuilt uh, the customer top 10 uh, 111 report by making use of a, a query uh, object. Now, in this case, we replaced uh, the data items by making use of a query object. What you can also do is you can combine the original table data items and uh, query objects to increase the performance of existing uh, reports. This uh, briefly explains how to create a report based upon a query object. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something. And I hope to see you again in one of the other titles of the How Do I series for Microsoft Dynamics NV 2013 R2.